CSS has changed dramatically in recent years, and most people don't seem to be aware of those changes. One of the changes in CSS3 is the ability to use variables in CSS. We used to need SCSS, SAS, or less to get CSS variables. Now we can do so natively in CSS. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, including best practices and implementation details. However, sometimes you just need to get a quick introduction to a topic. That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's get introduced to this topic. So what I have here is the world's most ugly website, but it's a simple cut down website to give you an illustration of the issue. And this is pretty common. So we have just an HTML site that has a body, an H1 tag, a paragraph tag, a couple of H2s with paragraphs underneath. Okay, real simple. And then my CSS, I have styled H1 tags, H2 tags, and paragraph tags. And if you notice, and if you're a developer who's working with, let's say, C Sharp, you are used to the concept called dry, don't repeat yourself. And you see right away that we've got some repetition. So the background color for H1s is, a, is this color right here, 007 BFF. And the color for H2s, the foreground color, the text color, is that same color. And so is the background color of paragraphs. And so we have this repetition of colors. We also have the repetition of color of white, but we'll skip that for now. We could, we could do the same thing with white, but we'll just do just the blue for right now. So what's the problem with having repetition in your CSS? Well, this works just fine. Just do it this way and continuing until you have a typo where maybe you have this be an eight instead of a zero. And then you don't realize that this blue is a little different than this blue. It's not much different, but it's a little different. You got a little shading problem here where there's a different shade than the other one. And so all of a sudden you've got a little difference here. And you don't even notice it. So that's one issue we can have. And another issue is just trying to keep track of it all to say, okay, which, which one's our, our main blue color and which one's our secondary blue color and how to keep those straight. And what if you have CSS elements over multiple files, how do you deal with all that stuff? So with CSS three, we have a feature called variables, and this is pretty simple. So we're gonna put this variable at the root of our site. And we're going to say that the brand main color is going to be our blue color. So that's that's our blue color. And then down here, wherever we see this color being used, we can instead say var and say dash dash brand main. And we'll use that same blue. So we can copy this and paste it everywhere that we're using our color. And now we can just say variable brand main, that's the one I'm looking for. And notice the web page hasn't changed at all. But if I were to come up here and let's just hover over here, it's kind of nice with, with VS code, I can change it to a red, right? And all of a sudden everything changes to that red. All three of those locations, and of course in a real CSS, you might have hundreds or even thousands of locations that have these colorings you can see it change all at once. And if you come back here and say, well, actually, I, I want to play around a little bit. I'm going to kind of move a slider down and look at what see this orange does. And okay, that's not quite right, but I, I get it. I mean, I can come down here and and play in more of the, the teal range and see, okay, that's kind of good. But now I've got this problem of my whites. Let's go ahead and, and handle those. So I'm going to say brand uh, secondary. And right now it's the white color. So we can now come down here and say var brand secondary. And again, nothing's gonna change, but since we're playing around the colors now, we go, wait, you know what? I don't think we should do white. We can go dramatic and just go, let's, let's do black instead. And there we go. Now that kind of pops back out again. So we can play around and say, actually, our secondary color is more of in this. And now you have the, the reddish color. So 
The point here isn't to make a beautiful CSS. That's not what I'm doing. Hopefully you know that. But what you can see is we can use these variables throughout our CSS without having to use a compiled CSS like SCSS in order to get this functionality. This is built into CSS and it's supported across browsers. So we can now use this to elevate what we do in our CSS in a way that is again, dry, not repeating ourselves with our coloring and allows us to then name these things and make it a lot more clear to read as well. What's the background color? It's our main color. What's the, the color? Well, it's our secondary color. Or you can call this your brand blue and your brand red because maybe you have a specific blue, but it might change over time. It might tweak it a little bit and just make it a little darker, a little lighter. We could just change it in one spot in your CSS and apply it everywhere. So that's how to use variables in CSS. And again, this applies to any web project, whether it be a just a straight up index.html on your CSS or whether you have a Blazor project or any other kind of web project this will work the same way. All right, thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.